Hello everyone, welcome to the pre-work video for the upcoming workshop entitled Foundations of Transgender Solidarity in Library Instruction. I am speaking to you today from Yalamu, part of the unceded territory of the Ramatush Ohlone. Ramatush is one of eight different linguistic subdivisions within the Ohlone, and the Ohlone people are comprised of over 50 different tribes. I recognize the struggles of the Ohlone people for sovereignty and federal recognition on their sacred ancestral land. As a visitor and a member of a non-Indigenous institution on occupied land, I invite other visitors to join me in supporting the Ramatush Ohlone campaign to remove racist statues and in supporting the rematriation work of the Segorite Land Trust in Huchin. I offer this acknowledgement in the spirit of accountability, repair, and healing. So my name is Amy Gilgan. I use they, them, theirs, and she, her, hers pronouns. I identify as white, queer, non-binary, and on the trans spectrum. I am the School of Education Librarian at the University of San Francisco, where I also serve as a facilitator for the Bias Education Resource Team. So as we move into the pre-work video, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the legacy of Black trans leadership. So the trans and queer liberation movement that we're currently engaging with grew out of resistance to state violence. And we wouldn't be having this discussion were it not for the leadership of Black trans women, including folks like Miss Major Griffin Gacy, Marsha P. Johnson, and these are just a couple of the black trans women who stood up against police violence at Stonewall. So I wanna take a minute to acknowledge the legacies that we're engaging with and that this isn't a new conversation and that BIPOC leadership has always been present within the trans movement. So this workshop was designed to be interactive. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of who the workshop is intended for, the framework I used to design it, and then I'll share a few basic definitions as well. So the primary audience of this workshop are folks who are wanting to be in solidarity with trans folks, but aren't quite sure how to do it and may be experiencing some fear and awkwardness. The secondary audience for this workshop are folks who maybe have been doing this work for a while, perhaps this is part of your identity, but you're working with folks, again, who really want to be in solidarity, but are struggling to find a way to do that, possibly being held back by their fear and awkwardness. So within the workshop, we will do a few active listening exercises. There'll be some journal prompts, um, a few chat box prompts as well. And folks are gonna be invited to engage with some ways that can help them reframe the shame that they can feel with making a mistake in terms of coming back to their values and being in alignment with trans liberation. And then there'll also be like a few tips for instruction within the classroom as well. So the identity model that I'm using to frame this workshop is called the Social Identity Development Model. And this is from Hardiman and Jackson. This particular model is an amalgamation of several different models, many of which are about racial identity development. And in this model, there are five stages. So the first stage is naive. So that's like essentially like children who don't have a sense of group identity and power dynamics. Second stage is acceptance, where folks may have a sense of group identity, but just kind of accept things the way they are without really delving into power too much. And then the third stage is where the dissonance can happen. And this is where folks recognize the what appears to be a conflict between their personal identities and their group identities in relation to power. And then the fourth stage, redefinition. So this is where folks are starting to be able to integrate some of these things and get a little more dialectical and hold the complexity. And then five is a continuation of that, of really integrating all of these things that appear to be in opposition to each other. So I like to focus on the third stage 
uh, because as a facilitator and a white non-binary person, I noticed that this is the stage that folks, when they're dealing with their, one of their dominant identities, tend to get stuck. And this is where, you know, we might see things like, um, you know, shame, so kind of an avoidance, perhaps performative allyship, things like that. And I think this development model is really helpful in normalizing this as a part of development so that we can actually name it and work through it. And it's really powerful for me, both, you know, going through the stages myself and being able to, you know, figure out how to build my own personal resources and as a facilitator, you know, encouraging folks to build their capacity so that they can actually stay in the work and make change. So I'm going to share a few basic definitions with you to make sure that we all have shared language as we get ready to go into this interactive workshop later in September. So the first term is gender identity, and this refers to one's internal sense of being male, female, neither of these both or other genders. The next term is transgender or trans. So this is like an umbrella term of many different gender identities of which talks about folks who do not identify or exclusively identify with their sex assigned at birth. Another term is cisgender cis. So this is used to describe someone whose gender identity and gender expression align with the sex assigned at birth. And then lastly, non-binary. So this refers to gender identities that are outside of or beyond two traditional concepts of male or female. There are different terms that are related, though not necessarily quite the same, like gender queer, for example, or possibly uh, gender fluid. One thing to keep in mind is that not all non-binary people identify on the trans spectrum. And so it's really important to you know, make sure we honor how folks are defining their own identities. So that's an overview of the workshop, the framework, and a bit of the basic terminology. So if you want to learn more, I encourage you to go to the CLAPS website and to go ahead and register for this interactive workshop. And I hope to see you on September 15th, 2020, 1130 Mountain Standard Time. Please do take good care of yourselves.